Hey everybody, it's Lisa, and uh, I'm here with a Dollar Tree haul. It's actually a few Dollar Tree hauls in one. Um, I at least three or four trips to Dollar Tree. Um, I've sort of been in hiding for about three days now. Um, trying to limit my time out in the real world to save myself from the plague. Um, I guess uh, I'll show you what I got. Um, there's a lot of books, a lot of random crap, and uh, well, first of all, we have Muller Real mayonnaise made with real eggs. You can't survive coronavirus or anything without a good thing of mayonnaise. And I find, now maybe, maybe if you were a person of real discerning taste, you could tell the difference between Dollar Tree mayonnaise and, and, uh, I don't know, what sort of expensive brand of mayonnaise. I always buy the cheapest one. There's Duke and Hellman's and all them. Um, but anyway, mayonnaise. So, as there's no toilet paper to be had in all of the 50 states and probably every single nation in the world, I decided I would get 175 generic soft facial tissues in case this lasts so many months and and everything and there's no toilet paper. I mean, there's ways. If I had to, I'd go out in the bushes and pick some leaves, I swear. Um, now, this is also a connoisseur's um, choice item. It is um, I think lip, lip and bis what? Anyway, brisk uh, fruit punch juice drink. Their other versions are okay, but the fruit punch is what really yanks my chain. You know, is that a is that a pro right way of saying that? I, I don't know. Oh boy, was I ever excited when I found this, and then I did something horrible. I bought every single pack of them. There were other, there were other packs, so you know, don't at me. But I got ten packs of uh, fifty each of uh, these uh, allegedly flushable. It says it's her flushable wipes. We shall see. So yeah, there's wipes. I think that's a lot enough that if I run out of toilet paper and all the, that I should be able to survive the plague with these. My best friend told me they're a little dry, but I'm mainly looking to be able to to handle business. Um, I don't really care about ex exceptional quality. Just the fact that I found those, I feel was almost miraculous in these times, if you know what I'm saying. Um, you can always use some batteries. Uh, these are crappy, but they'll... They they work pretty well in things that that don't require a whole lot of juice like uh those uh um battery operated sprayers or I have an original Game Boy, those work pretty well on in those. Um dry shampoo. I don't know if you've ever seen my hair, but it's like an abomination and 
we'll leave it at that. So I thought some dry shampoo would, would do me pretty well. And you can't go to a plague without a uh, top raven chicken um, flavor. You get five for a dollar. That's not horrible. I remember at the time when they were like ten cents a piece, but in my day, and the first of our our uh, books, a uh, textbook, Amy Krauss, Rosenthal, um, not exactly a memoir. Let's see. In the ten years since the publication of her beloved groundbreaking Encyclopedia of Ordinary Life, number one New York Times bestselling author Amy Cross Rosenthal has been quietly tinkering away, using her distinct blend of nonlinear narrative, wistful reflections, and insightful wit. She ha has created a modest but mighty new work. Why the title textbook Amy Krauss was involved? Because the book is organized into chapters with classic subject he headings such as social studies, music, language, arts, math, etc. Because textbook is an expression meaning quintessential, as in, oh, that wordplay in unconventional format is so typical of her. So textbook Amy, because for the first time ever, readers can further engage with a book via text messaging. Because if an author's previous book was encyclopedia in the title, following it up with a textbook would be rather nice. I think that's it. You get the general gist of that book. It might be good. I love memoirs, you know. And I got one of these bags. I used these back when we had a, the YMCA before... Before the, before the pestilence hit in, um, I would use these until they broke. Um, they're like Dollar Tree uh, bags. I usually get them uh, when I'm carrying a whole lot of stuff because I ride the bus. Um, and if I'm feeling like uh, I'm, I've got too much stuff and I'm having trouble lifting it and everything, and I don't have my little shopping cart thing, I get one of these to like lighten my load a little bit and put some of the stuff in there. Oh, a whole lot of information you just didn't really need to know, but that's fine. Terrified by Angela Hart. Uh, these books, they used to really be popular in the 90s. Um, and, and I think they're still popular on Amazon where you explore your your foster kid or whatever for uh, to write a book about them um, so that's one of these uh, the heartbreaking true story of a girl nobody loved and the woman who saved her they do these like you know 50 of them churn them out which is a sad commentary on life but but uh yeah I've seen plenty of those, but it, you know, it was a dollar, might be interesting. Um, I just love the co uh, love the name of this, and and the black cat reminds me of my long long de deceased cat Philippe. Uh, a semi definitive list of worst nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. Ever since Esther Soler's grandfather met death. Her entire family has been cursed to suffer one great fear in their lifetime, a fear that will eventually lead each and every one of them to their graves. Take Esther's father, for instance. He's an agoraphobe who hasn't left the basement in six years. Then there's her twin brother, Eugene, whose fear of the dark goes far beyond the things that go bump in the night, and her mother, Rosemary, is absolutely terrified of bad luck. So as, as for Esther, she's managed to escape the curse so far. She doesn't yet have a great fear because she avoids pretty much everything. And <laughs> I'm a little bit like that, so I just, uh, I, I gravitated towards that. <laughs> 
Things I'm Seeing Without You by Peter Bognani. 17-year-old Tess Fowler has just dropped out of high school. She's reeling from the news of Jonah's death. Jonah, the boy she only knew through texts and heartfelt emails. Jonah, the first boy she told she loved and the first boy to say it back. Jonah, the boy whose suicide she never saw coming. Tess continues to write to Jonah even after he's gone looking for answers to the big questions that haunt her. But for now, she's finding solace in the, um, in the unlikeliest of places, her father's alternative funeral business. Who knew that arranging last rites for prized pets could be so life-affirming? But love, loss, and life are so much more complicated than Tess ever thought, especially after she receives a message that turns her world upside down. This sounded good. Wreck My Life, Journeying from the Broken to Bold by Mo Isom. What if we began to recognize trouble and adversity as a sacred rather than scarring? And it's this is like a, a religious book. I'm not exceptionally religious, just enough to get by, you know, uh, if I think I'm about to die or something, or something adverse happens, I'll... Or something adverse happens to somebody else, I'll, I'll, you know, to pray. But anyway, it was a dollar, and it sounded interesting. Jesus promises peace and trouble for his followers. But most of us accept the peace and are confused and angry when adversity comes our way, turning our backs to God in the midst of our pain. All-American soccer star Mo Isom knows the struggle firsthand. While her life seemed like a success on the surface, beyond closed doors, she was suffering through an eating disorder, the suicide of her father, and a horrific car accident. It wasn't until God wrecked her life that she finally found life and discovered the true glory of renewal through the uh, Jesus Christ. You know, I almost have a problem with this book. A little bit. I'm just going to be honest. I shouldn't talk about this. Uh, I shouldn't. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, in, in a way I agree that adverse things sometimes can take a 360 and turn out to be something that, that was meant to happen and things got better afterward or something, but... Um, I don't know. There's something a little cringe about that. I know it's, I know it's based on, uh, you know, what was his name? What was his name? Uh, miserable comforters. Are you all Job? Yeah, Job. Come to comfort the afflicted. And anyway. After today's Bible study, we have Same Kind of Different as Me by Ron Hall and Denver Moore with Lynn Vincent. Uh, It begins outside a burning plantation hut in Louisiana and in East Texas honky-tonk, and without a doubt in the heart of God, it unfolds in a Hollywood hacienda, an upscale New York gallery, a downtown dumpster, a Texas ranch. Gritty with pain and betrayal and brutality, it also shines with an unexpected life-changing love. And it says the incredible true story that inspired millions until it hit the Dollar Tree. That last part I added in. Now this looks interesting. Revolution for Dummies, Laughing Through the Arab Spring by Bassem Youssef. 
Basim Yusuf, a satirist who rose to fame in the middle of the Egyptian Revolution with his incendiary brand of comedy and his knack for unabashedly mocking dictators, has been called the John Stewart of Egypt. Once a heart surgeon who filmed YouTube skits in the laundry room of his home, he eventually grew to become one of the most recognizable television hosts in Egyptian history, and his show became the most popular TV program in Egypt. Much to the ire of the TV anchors, government officials, and military personnel who tried desperately to shut it down. So prevalent were Yusuf's skits, jokes, and commentary that he was accused of insulting the Egyptian presidency and even Islam itself, leading to a war in 2013 for his arrest. Despite turning himself in, Yusuf was interrogated for six hours before he being released on bail, which prompted his idol, Mr. John Stewart himself, to issue a statement on his behalf in the episode of The Daily Show. Though Yusuf's case was eventually dismissed, his TV show was terminated and he found himself fleeing Egypt in fear of his life. And it sounds interesting. It just really sounds really interesting. And, and I, I just thought I had to have that one. I don't know. Suzanne's Children, A Dairy Rescue in Nazi Paris by Ann Nelson used to belong in Target, apparently. Um, it's about a, a French aristocrat who saves a lot of Jewish children. I've already looked through it, so I, I know what, what the book's about on that one. Um, and that, I always enjoy reading um, memoirs about the Holocaust. I, should I say enjoy reading? I I'm interested in in that. Now I couldn't tell you a single Carly Simon song, but the the book sounded interesting. Boys in the Trees, a memoir. Carly Simon's memoir reveals her remarkable life beginning with her story childhood as the third daughter of Richard L. Simon, the co-founder of publishing giant Simon & Schuster, and her musical debut as half of the Simon sisters in performing book songs with her sister Lucy in Greenwich Village to a meteoric solo career that would result in the 13 top 40 hits, none of which I apparently know. She was the first artist in history to win a Grammy Award, an Academy Award, and a Golden Globe Award. Boys in the Trees recalls a childhood enriched by music and culture, but also one shrouded in secrets that would eventually tear her family apart. Simon brilliantly captures moments of creative inspiration. The sparks of songs and the stories behind writing anticipation and We Have No Secrets, among many others. Yep, don't know it. Don't, I don't know that song. Just don't know it. But it sounded interesting, and I like memoirs, like I said. Uh. Mm -hmm. Can't, uh, can't survive the zombie apocalypse. Or the end of days without one of these nice um, uh, long lighters that you can use on candles. Uh, already opened these earphones. They're the best ones too. Uh, you won't, won't be able to tell what kind they were. But they, they're really, really good. Uh, they're loud. They're... Um, just really nice. Some are better than others at Dollar Tree. I'm sure they won't last very long, but what can you do? I I know that I would probably never want Beats by Gray or or Air those Apple things because I lose earphones like the plague, and if even if I had like two hundred dollar earphones, I know I'd lose them. 
So why would I do that, you know? Anyway, The Present Heart, A Memoir of Love, Loss, and Discovery by Polly Young Eisendrath, Ph.D. After a chance encounter with a handsome, idealistic stranger on a plane in 1969, Paul, uh, Polly Young Eisendrath rediscovered Ed Epstein a decade later when she least expected it. After untangling themselves from their existing relationships, they married in 1985 and spent the next 25 years together. They were soulmates, but in 2001, Ed, at the vital age of 53, began to show signs of Alzheimer's disease. Over the next 10 years, as her husband gradually reversed the mental maturity, Polly Lee was faced with the question, what is love? Uh, oops, didn't want that one. I like vintage crap. And this is an old reprint. Um, Guests or How to Survive Hospitality, the classic guidebook by Russell Lyons. I think the book was originally published probably in the 30s or 40s. Oh, 50s, 1951. I'm slipping. I used to be able to tell from a cover and everything when a book was published, but mainly the ones that were in the 1800s and and so, but... Sassy, don't get burned. Let Mommy... Well, you went away. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a candle lit there. What Comes Next and How to Like It, a memoir by Abigail Thomas. Abigail and Chuck have been friends for 35 years. They have stood by each other for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, through death and divorces. With open hearts, generous spirits, and the gift of humor, they weathered the explosive affair that nearly shattered their bond. Sounded interesting. And I've never read Pinocchio. I read parts of Pinocchio, but I've never actually read Pinocchio. And this appears to be an unabridged version, and has all the old, has all the bunch of illustrations. I appreciate illustrations. Um, hello, Chapet. Yes. I've always wanted to read that, and I figure before I die of coronavirus or whatever, um, that I try to knock that one down. All is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walk Walker, and it says film rights sold to Warner Brothers. I wonder if it actually got got beat into a film or it went into development hell and then ended up at Dollar Tree. It'd be interesting to know. But it's a, the book is a, uh, the book is similar to got a similar premise to My Sweet Aldrina if you've ever read that. Uh, so my camera cut off. But anyway, this one's about uh, Lafayette. Oh Lord. Next time I do one of these, I really should not. I really should not get so many books because it takes five hundred hours to to tell you what the book's about, and it probably bores people. Uh, the Heart by Malus de Karen, y'all. What? What? Driving back from an early morning surfing trip with two friends, Simon Limber is involved in a fatal car accident on a deserted country road. Framed within the 24 hours following the crash, the heart describes the resulting heart transplant 
as life is transferred from the teenage boy and given to a woman close to death. Sounded interesting. It's a novel, but it sounded interesting, and I like I like foreign stuff. So, is it even is it gauche now to say things are foreign? I think it is. Oh well. Um, I always get these, so it's not like really all that fascinating, but. But if you're going to survive coronavirus, it's good to have some cookies. I'm just I'm trying to give you some advice. Plus, Lord only knows what's going to happen. Happiness, a memoir by by Heather Harpham. The Crooked Little Road to Semi Ever After. Happiness begins with a charming courtship between hopelessly attracted opposites Heather, a world roaming California gal and improviser, and Brian, an intellectual homebody writer, loath to leave. His Upper West Side studio, whose sly humor and kindness dissolve in their differences. Their magical interlude ends full stop when Heather becomes pregnant. Brian is sure he loves her. If I wanted to have kids with anyone, it would be with you. Only he doesn't want kids. Heather returns to California to deliver their daughter alone, buoyed by a tribe of family and friends. Shortly after Gracie's arrival, Heather's new mom bliss is interrupted by a nurse who appears beside bedside at dawn. Get up and get dressed, your baby is in trouble. This is not how Heather had imagined new motherhood, alone and heartsick, an unexpectedly solo caretaker of a baby who, though she smelled like sliced apple and salted pretzels, is perhaps perilously sick. Brian reappears as Gracie's condition grows more dire. Together they have to decide how much they are willing to risk to ensure their girl sees adulthood. I better, I better blow this out because I'm going to end up knocking it over and causing fire. Luckily, my Pepsi was empty just now. Oh, uh, another peck wet wipes unless this fell. Um, assuming Easter isn't completely called off, this. Here I got a door hanger. This will um, give me notice if the zombies start coming in. A pack of freezes. I have I have some like potting soil and it's been sitting in my room in my closet and I was like uh, and I have like a little pot and I thought well I'm gonna buy some of these on the presumption that I'll see spring and summer so uh, we're gonna try that and the, I believe the last but most important thing that I got oh wait wait next to last thing um so I, I had to get a new phone because my old one was acting up rather bad. And I love these ring phone holder things they have. Uh, um, I've used them a, a few times on things. Um, they work really well. And uh, this one was pretty blingy. I also have one on my tablet. They don't like to... to um, such an on the, you know, the really cheap plastic, uh, covers that, that, uh, that, um, uh, El Cheapo tablets, uh, use, but I, it, it basically adhered to it, and I, 
I use it to prop it up. I, I wouldn't trust it too much to walk around with it. Um, besides, I usually have my, I usually have a cover over it anyway to make sure I don't drop it and break it. Because I'm prone to breaking tablets and that was too much information that you didn't really need. But anyway, the most important thing in how to survive the coronavirus is Care Bears. They have Care Bears. They have Care Bears. Oh. Let's see. Torch on. There I go. I thought I had my light. Yeah. Anyway, that's Share Bear. So damn cute. I don't even know you could tell just how cute these are. Look, just look at that. They're a lot better done than the My Little Pony ones. Uh, love a lot. Oh my god. I can remember back in the mid 80s having a bunch of those little miniature ones of these um, sort of similar but the little poseable ones and just absolutely loving those and Cheer Bear she's a little darker pink than her original iteration um, but you know I, it's cute I think I got Grumpy Bear. Surely I got Grumpy Bear. That's the only uh, other one in the in the set. <sighs> Come on, don't tell me I I'm gonna have to search high and low at Dollar Tree next time I force this venture out. For oh nope that's. Not it. And the very last thing, because you know that the worst thing uh, is you're, you're going to grind your teeth while this lovely thing's happening. But I do it anyway. I probably do it in the daytime. But these, uh, you know, you're only supposed to use these like once, but I use them more than once. So, you know, rinse it off and there you go. And, um, but uh, a great option for a dollar, you know, some dentists charge like $300 or more for one of these. And uh, um, I find them more comfortable than than the uh, like $30 priced ones that you can uh, boil and make ready. And I like how they change the packaging. Anyway, I think that's everything. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and you weren't terribly bored and you actually made it through to the very end. Because this is really, really too long for a video, but what can you do? And it's not like any of us can go anywhere, so... Well, we can go. But do we want to go? Anyway, um... Thank you. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, please.